evening. You're watching the news at 7.30 on ATV. I'm Raymond Yeung. And I'm Winna Wong. Here's a look at tonight's top stories. Siwa Leung dismisses online allegations by his daughter that she had been beaten by her mother. Green light given for third runway at Chetlap Kok with passengers helping to foot the bill. And Hawker arrested on suspicion of causing serious head injuries to enforcement officer. Chief Executive Leung Chen Ying has denied a series of online allegations by his older daughter that she had been pushed and slapped by her mother at their official residence. Leung admitted that his middle child has health problems, but denied that anyone was injured at Government House today. As hordes of reporters gathered outside Government House today, Leung Chai Yan, looking distraught, was occasionally spotted on the balcony of her father's official residence. The massive public interest prompted Chief Executive Leung Chen Ying to call the press this afternoon when he acknowledged that his older daughter has health problems. He said she had been taken out of a prestigious British university to be closer to her parents. The chief executive admitted that Chai Yan has been under great pressure since returning to Hong Kong, and his busy schedule at Government House was not helping her rest properly. Leung's weekly cabinet meeting this morning was interrupted when he found out that police and an ambulance had been called to his home. He said officers informed him nobody was injured and denied he had prevented his daughter from getting into an ambulance. We definitely uh, will give her whatever medical assistance uh, she needs as and when necessary. He also shot down claims that his wife, Regina Tong, had assaulted their daughter. Before ending the afternoon press briefing, Leung appealed to the press to give Leung Chai Yan space. He had made a similar call before the executive council meeting this morning when he responded to questions about his daughter's Facebook posts. Those began at around 6 a.m. with Leung Chai Yan making allegations against her mother. The 23-year-old wrote, My mother literally just pushed me up against a wall, slapped me. Then, writing in Chinese, Leung's daughter accused her mother of using obscene words to describe her lifestyle. Reverting to English, she wrote, kicked me, I fell, hit my spine against corner of study table, proceeded to threaten to call the cops on me. About five hours after her first post, she made an update saying, I don't even have the legal rights as a normal Hong Kong citizen because of who my parents are, and went on to say she was being held against her will. At around noon, Leung Chai Yan wrote that she had been ordered to say everything's fine before her Facebook page suddenly became unavailable. Chai Yan is the second of the family's three children. She has an older brother and younger sister. As a student of the London School of Economics, she made headlines last year when she said the stabbing of former Ming Pao chief editor Kevin Lau had nothing to do with press freedom. In June last year, she posted a photo on Facebook with the caption, Will I bleed to death? During a recent tell-all TV interview, she said she had a hundred arguments with her parents. The government has approved, has approved plans for a third runway, which will take seven years to build at a cost of $141.5 billion. The airport authority will foot most of the bill, but airlines and passengers will also contribute. ATV's Arthur Ercula reports. After years of anticipation, Transport Secretary Anthony Chung announced today that the Executive Council has given the green light for a third runway at Chet Clap Cock. When it was first mooted in 2011, the price tag was expected to be $136 billion, but the airport authority, the AA, has revised the cost upwards. AA has critically reviewed the scope of the three one-way system project and advised that the updated capital cost for this project is estimated to be $141.5 billion in money of the day prices. AA plans to finance the project through multiple channels, including the use of internal funds, external borrowings, and charging users. Airlines will be charged 15% more at the airport, but Chung pointed out the airport's fees were currently among the lowest in the world. The government therefore agrees there is room for increasing airport charges, which is actually to bring such charges back to the level before the year 2000, with subsequent adjustment in line with inflation. When building work begins, departing passengers will have to fork out $180 each for the airport construction fee, or ACF. 
Uh, if you look at in the past uh, few years, the level of uh, uh, fuel surcharge uh, is way above the level that we're now proposing for the uh, ACF. So we don't believe that uh, um, a passenger uh, would deter from using the airport just because of this additional uh, cost. The project is set to be completed in 2023 if construction starts next year as scheduled. Aviation officials say the third runway is needed because the airport would reach its operational capacity by 2017. The new runway would increase the number of flights per hour at Cheklap Kok from 68 to 102, with 620,000 flights annually. Environmentalists have argued that the 650 hectare reclamation work required for the project would severely damage the habitat of the Chinese white dolphin. However, Lam insisted that all measures are being taken to minimize the effect on the environment, adding that a one-year delay would cost an extra $7 billion. We are obviously uh, watching this very closely. Um, uh, we hope that it will not in any way impact uh, on our project. Uh, otherwise, uh, the loser would be uh, the entire Hong Kong community. The project passed an environmental assessment in November, but there have been criticisms that the authorities are focusing on economic benefits while playing down the social and environmental impact. Arthur Urquiola, ATV News. Police have arrested a man on suspicion of severely injuring a hawker control officer during an altercation in Central on Sunday. The officer is still fighting for his life amid reports that he has suffered brain damage. The attack on a hawker control officer in Central on Sunday was captured in this shocking surveillance camera footage that only emerged online today. The hawker in a light blue jacket was seen fleeing into a building with his goods as 58-year-old Wu Kuang Shum arrived at the scene on Daefu Road Central. Wu grabbed the hawker's right arm. But after a brief struggle, Wu was shoved to the ground when he lost consciousness. Passersby checked on his condition after the hawker ran away, but none of Wu's colleagues showed up throughout the video, which lasted 1 minute and 17 seconds. Wu, who suffered serious head injuries during the fall, was admitted to Queen Mary Hospital's neurosurgery ward in critical condition. Health Chief Koeng Man, who visited the victim yesterday, refused to confirm reports that Wu has suffered brainstem damage, citing the lack of consent from his family to reveal his condition. Food and Environmental Hygiene Director Vivian Lau has met her colleagues to discuss plans to improve training and support for frontline staff. Speaking before his weekly cabinet meeting this morning, Chief Executive Leung Chen Ying sent his regards to Wu and his family. He also urged people not to obstruct law enforcement officers in carrying out their duties and said violence against the officers will not be tolerated. The breakthrough in the hunt for the suspect came this afternoon when a man surrendered to police. Central Assistant District Commander Wong Chi Kuang said the man, a 36-year-old Pakistani, was arrested twice previously for illegal hawking. A toilet come flat offered for rent in Kuantong has triggered controversy. The tiny apartment costs twice as much per square foot as some flats in upmarket projects in the same district. ATV's Alison Chan reports. It's no secret that private housing is out of reach for many because of exorbitant prices, despite government's efforts to cool down the red-hot property market. Even rents are high. So it came as a shock when this toilet in the Kuntong flat was offered for rent for $2,200 a month. All the landlord did was add a wooden board above the toilet bowl, creating a makeshift bed. The outrageous sum demanded for a toilet converted into a flat triggered a storm of controversy after this picture circulated online. The so-called apartment measures just 30 square feet, so the rent works out at $73 per square foot, more than double the rent of a privately owned flat in the same area. According to data provided by a property agency online, it costs around $24,000 to rent a 769-square-foot apartment in Park Metropolitan nearby. That works out to only $31 per square feet. More than 10 people angered by the steep rent protested outside the Taipo home of Housing Minister Anthony Chen this morning. They denounced the government for ignoring the housing needs of the city's poor and demanded that rent control be implemented as soon as possible. Alison Chan, ATV News. In other local news, former ATV owner Dick Kim Chiu has died at the age of 90. 
and the government hopes to diversify Hong Kong's freshwater sources by building a desalination plant. During the budget address, the government reinstated plans to build a desalination plant in Cheng Kuan O to reduce Hong Kong's reliance on imported fresh water from Guangdong province. The Development Bureau revealed today that at 2013 prices, each cubic meter of fresh water will cost $13 to produce by desalination, compared with $9.30 for cross-border imports. The Bureau will now seek $150 million to kickstart design and surveying work and is confident the funding request will not be delayed by filibustering in Leshko. The project is estimated to be completed by 2020 at a cost of $9.3 billion. Pan-Democrat lawmakers have rejected late applications from four pro-government lawmakers to join a Lechko establishment subcommittee. They dismissed their pro-Beijing rivals' claims that a blunder by their political assistants was the reason for their late applications. The meeting was adjourned, as many applicants did not even show up to explain their case, with 12 other applications postponed to end of April. The panel is one of two key subgroups of the Finance Committee that the Pan-Democrats took control of in a last-minute rush last October, putting them in a strong position to block government funding requests. Former ATV chairman Deacon Chiu has died at his home in Tinkau this morning at the age of 90. The tycoon was found unconscious and was declared dead at Yan Chai Hospital shortly after 11 a.m. The founder of Far East Holdings made its name by acquiring ATV in 1982 and remained one of the few owners to sell the station at a profit. Overseas, Israelis are voting in an election which could see Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu losing his job. A strong challenge by a center-left alliance and growing demands for better economic and social programs could derail Netanyahu's ambition to become Israel's longest-serving leader. ATV's Joyce Wu reports. Nearly six million Israelis are voting in one of the country's closest elections ever. At stake are 120 seats in parliament, but the focus is on who will emerge as prime minister. The incumbent Benjamin Netanyahu cast his ballot today as he tried to become Israel's longest serving leader. He's already served nine years and is seeking a fourth term. But he faces a strong challenge from a center-left alliance. In an 11th hour pitch to far-right voters, Netanyahu vowed that there will be no Palestinian state while he's at the helm of government. The center-left Zionist Union, which was expected to give Netanyahu's Likud party a run for its money, favors better ties with the Palestinians. Yitzhak Herzog, who heads the union, has shot up in opinion polls because he has focused on falling living standards. Economic and social problems concern many Israeli voters who are expected to back the party that they think will best ease their worries. Neither Likud nor the Zionist Union is expected to win more than a quarter of the vote. Under Israel's proportional representation system, the party with the most votes gets first go at trying to form a coalition government. If it fails, then the next biggest vote-getter will get its chance. It could take several weeks before Israel's next government is formed.